So let's talk a little bit about the distinction between a critical and a sensitive period for language acquisition. So for critical period, the idea is if there truly is a critical period, the word critical is the important word here, people learning language after this period should not succeed very well at all because they've missed the critical period. It was critical. And in fact, they should all be equally bad. They all missed the boat, right? So in contrast, people within the critical period, no matter when they started learning within the critical period, should do very well. They should be equally native-like, right? So if we imagine what we have here, this little graph of age of initial exposure on the x-axis from, you know, zero all the way up to however old, right? And on the y-axis, sort of language acquisition performance or your ability to reach native level proficiency, right? If you start being exposed to that language within the critical period, it doesn't matter if you were started at age zero or age whenever the critical period ends, right? You're, you're equally as good, right? But if you miss it, we see this discontinuous function of performance. If you miss it, even if you just miss it by a little bit, right? Shroomp, down you go, right? You, learn, you start learning here or here or here or here, here, right? You're all equally bad. Okay, that's the critical period of languages, is you're either in it or you're not. And if you're in it, you're native-like, and if you're not, you have just completely missed the boat, right? Now, most of the evidence that we've seen so far and that we currently have suggests that there is a smoother drop-off in ability, right? It's not like you suddenly go from all to nothing, right? And these are various excerpts from Hart Sorn et al. 2018 who looked at different ages of exposure from 0 to 9, from 10 to 19, from 20 to 30. And, you know, this is talking about sort of, you can see down here, this is particularly illustrative, the age of first exposure and your performance, right? And monolinguals who first learned their native language are like up here and like they you know the 98th percentile. And immersion learners at, you know, age 10 or 20 or 30, they're not down here, right? In fact, this axis only, only goes down to 82%. I mean, they're not terrible, but they're not native. But there's a, there's a smooth drop off whether you're an immersion learner or a non-immersion learner, right? And so we don't see that discontinuous function. In fact, what we see, again, looks more like a sensitive period, right? So then instead, there's the same thing where if you're in that sensitive period, it's just like the critical period, where if you're in it, you're, you're gonna be equally as good as a native speaker, right? But if you miss it, the difference is that for a sensitive period, there's a gradual drop off in ability. There's not this sharp discontinuous, like everyone is equally bad for a critical period. So for a sensitive period, if you start learning here, well, you're almost native-like. If you start learning here, you're a little less native-like. If you start learning here, you're not really native-like, right? But it's a, it's a smooth drop-off. So that's the difference between a sensitive period versus what happens if you miss a critical period.